Yo guys, Medieval Marty here and welcome to another video. So, Phasmophobia, the fear of ghosts. Everyone's playing this game, it's currently the number one purchased game on Steam. All the big YouTubers are playing it, your friends are playing it, the Twitch streamers are playing it, and you want to play it. Maybe you've just bought it, or maybe you're thinking about buying it, but how the hell do you play it, or what the hell is it? Let's get into it. So Phasmophobia is a team-based ghost investigation game. You load out with a bunch of items, you head into a scary location with your friends, and you try to find and identify the ghost. There's lots of different ghosts, and you have to try and find out which ghost it is by doing certain things to interact with it. And each ghost interacts with you and other items differently. There's a bit more to it than that, but that's the gist of how the game works. So on the surface, that doesn't sound too interesting, but what makes it the best-selling game on Steam is that you play with your friends and the game is terrifying. So you just bought the game, you load out in the van, there's boards all around you, equipment all around you. This can be quite nerve wracking. So let's run down what everything does and what you need to be paying attention to and what you can just forget. First off, big whiteboard. Now at the end of every game, you are rewarded with a certain amount of money. The main way to do this is to find and identify the ghost, but you're always given additional objectives, such as take a photo of the ghost or interact with the ghost in a certain way. Now, you wanna be hitting as many of these objectives as you can because the money can buy you some really cool stuff that can help you and help your team. Don't be overwhelmed because some of these objectives will require items that you don't yet have or haven't yet unlocked. So just try and do what you can and have fun. Now spin directly around and you've got the TV. This TV tracks the CCTV cameras in the house and also will track any cameras that you lay yourself. Now you don't just leave this van and never come back. Generally, if you're playing with three or four people, there'll be someone keep coming back to the van, checking the cameras, looking for certain types of ghosts, looking for ghost orbs. So this TV is very handy. You can also switch between normal view and night vision mode, which is helpful. Now on the other screens, you can track lots of different things like ghost activity, but the big one here is sanity. Keep your sanity high, or if you want to be a pro player, keep it intentionally low. Now sanity is reduced by going in dark areas or by going near the ghost, that lowers it. Or if you are, if you actually see the ghost, that really lowers it. And the big thing is sanity does not come back. A lot of people hide in the van, but that stops your sanity going down any further. The only way to really get your sanity back is by taking sanity pills. That can put it up back to almost 40%. However, you might want to keep your sanity low on purpose. The ghost will target the person with the lowest sanity. In a few of my games, we didn't have enough torches to go around. So one person was always plummeting their sanity because they were walking around in the dark and that would trigger the ghost. As soon as that ghost comes for you, everyone's taking photos, they leave evidence, and that's a really good way to get the objectives done. If you're all walking around with full sanity, you could be waiting quite a long time to find a little hint of where the ghost is or what it's doing. If you want to sacrifice someone to get some evidence, low sanity is the way to do it. Now, before we get into what all the different equipment does, let me just teach you how to win the game. What you need to do is find three pieces of key evidence, put them in your journal, and then that will tell you what ghost you are dealing with. That's the main objective, done. Now, once you put three evidence in here, it will automatically only let you pick the correct ghost. We've been in a situation sometimes where we could only find two out of three evidence and we weren't sure what the last one was, but that will limit you to what it could be. It could be three ghosts could fit this criteria, so what you can do is you can go through the ghost guide and read about the ghosts and try and understand, based on your experience, what type of ghost it felt like. This isn't a great way to finish it. Obviously it's best to find all the evidence, but if you're limited by what you could buy or a team have died and you can't really set up to get the last piece, then this is a good way of trying to wing it. We were right maybe one in three times, so it's not perfect, but it is a way to whittle it down. Now, I don't want to get into every single type of equipment, how to use it, how they work best, because there's like 10, this is a beginner's guide. I want to go over the key ones you're going to use and the ones you're going to use in pretty much every game. So first things first, the cameras. Now you can set up two different types of cameras. You've got a still camera, which is for taking photographs. You get five photographs. This is key. We've took five photos in the van messing around and then that camera was useless. So only try and capture photos of the ghost when you see it or when you think you see it. Now, some additional objectives will actually ask you to take a photo of certain different things, obviously use it for them as well. But yeah, be careful with those five photos. And the other one is the video camera. Now the video camera, you can set it up in certain locations. What you wanna do is try and work out where the ghost is, set the camera up there, and then go back to the van and watch it on the CCTV. Once you get a bit better or a bit further in the game, you can buy like a tripod and you can set it up on a tripod. 
but you can just put it on countertops or even on the floor we've done that a few times and you can have someone in the van watching for the ghost you can also find ghost orbs this way which are little particles that float across the screen and they can be used as a certain type of evidence now the next big sources of equipment i'm going to bundle them all together because they do the same thing now these are all going to be light sources now i'm going to put them in two parts one is the flashlight the flashlight puts a huge cone of light in front of you and is amazing everyone should have one if you can't get the flashlight if there's too many of you and you don't have enough money to buy one the uv light works almost as well but your light is a different color i think it's a little bit dimmer but i've used it all the time and it's great the uv light is also used for identifying ghost fingerprints now the most ones i've seen are like fingerprints on doors like a handprint or on certain things around the house this counts as a piece of evidence if you find fingerprints so if you're walking around with it as a flashlight win-win now you also have glow sticks which work kind of like a uv light it does identify fingerprints but it needs to be very close and it's not a great light source personally i don't use it but you also then there's also the candle now the candle you set it up in a room and you use the lighter to light it the lighter not a good light source but it does light the candle now the ghost will try and trip out the lights they'll take lights out in the room and they'll take out the electric box taking lights out in the whole house if you've got a candle set up you will avoid that and keep a room lit Sometimes you can put like the, the main room, put the candle in there, and that's like a safe room where you can run back to then. We've done that a few times, so worth bearing in mind. They're all your light sources. Light is so important. You also wanna keep the lights off when you're trying to find the ghost though, as the ghost isn't gonna show up in a fully lit room when everyone's around. Right, next comes the really fun bit. Talking to the ghost. When you start the game on the whiteboard, you'll have the ghost name, and you'll be told if it responds to everyone or a single person. Now, when you go in the house, start calling it out. The more you talk to the ghost, the angrier you will make it and the more chance of it showing. Now, the ghost will respond through the spirit box. So if you turn this on, you can ask it, how old are you? How did you die? This can be terrifying, but the spirit box is a great way to talk to it. And it's a course, source of evidence. The other way you have is the Ouija board. You can use that to talk to the ghost. This isn't in your van. You'll find this in the house and you can use this again to communicate and then not quite the same as the others but you have the ghost writing book you can give this to the ghost and it will write in it it doesn't really communicate with you but you know it will write in the book and you can use that as a source of evidence now guys this is a beginner's guide i think i've covered pretty much everything you need to start playing the game understanding how to play understanding what to use and to use your equipment properly um, to avoid certain mistakes how to find the ghost how to capture the ghost's uh, evidence and how to identify the ghosts to win the match. Hopefully this covers everything. There's a lot more to the game. And as the houses get more difficult, you need to start buying different equipment and handling the different ghosts differently. So some things I would suggest in the later game would be a thermometer, because this can show you what parts of the house are cold and the ghost is normally, well, most ghosts are in the cold areas of the house. So this is a good way of finding the ghost quickly. Another good tip would be sanity pills and having enough torches for everyone once you get into bigger houses. And then the rest of the tactics depend on what kind of house, what kind of area you're in and how big your team is. It would depend on do you want to get a crucifix, do you need to be buying salt, do you need to be buying tripods, things like that are all situational. But hopefully I've given you enough stuff to start the game with your friends and have fun. If this video has helped you, subscribing would really help me out. This is a new channel, so all the support is really appreciated. If you have any further questions, drop a comment or come chat to me on Twitch. I stream most evenings from 7pm UK time. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good day.